Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this APM webinar sponsored by Charter Court Financial Services and Wellington PPM. We are delighted to welcome today Baz Kinder, Commercial Director at Wellington, who will be joined by Sarah Ward, PMO Manager at Charter Court Financial Services and Associate Director of Change Delivery, Simon Drinkwater. Please be aware that this webinar is being recorded and that you are in listen-only mode. However, please do participate with the content by writing questions in the questions area of your dashboard. Once the webinar has finished, we will submit all questions to the speakers and publish the answers to you by email link. You will receive an email providing the links for the APM webinar recording loaded onto our APM YouTube account and also for the slides loaded onto our APM SciShare account. We will also make speakers' contact details available so they can be contacted directly. So, without further ado, I'm delighted now to hand over to Baz. Thank you very much, Kate, and uh, welcome everyone to this webinar today. I'm the host, Baz Kinder, and I'll be speaking with some Drinkwater and Sarah Ward to understand how they've transformed the project management approach within Charter Corp Financial Services through Microsoft Project Online. So, good afternoon, Simon. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon, Baz. Good afternoon. Just before delving in to the uh, question and answer session that I'm going to have, uh, here is the agenda for this webinar today. So we'll be starting shortly with an introduction to Wellington and Charter Corp Financial Services before I ask Simon and Sarah a series of questions to establish the customer story. Towards the end, I'll share details of the forthcoming case study and an upcoming financial services event at the Microsoft offices in London that's taking place on the 1st of May. We'll also be sharing our contact details so that you can get in touch with any questions you may have. However, as Kate mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, then please do submit them by the GoTo panel and we'll respond to those as well. Firstly, a bit about Wellington. So we as a company have offices in the UK, Ireland and Spain, and our mission statement is to enable you to make a step change in your PPK maturity. And we achieve this through a number of services focused on helping you to do just that. We're not only focused on the technology and we do take a truly holistic approach. Uh, we can help you to define your PPM strategy, help you to build your capability through APM accredited training, amongst other things, and complete delivery of templates to maturity assessments and, of course, Microsoft PPM and a wide range of associated solutions from Microsoft. We also publish the annual state of project management report with the 2019 report due to land in the next month or so. And we also run a future PMO, which is a one-day PMO event. Details for that available at futurepmo.com. We have a number of badges, and I won't go through the entire list, but in brief, we are Microsoft Gold accredited partners. We be specialist project and portfolio management competency. We're also an APM accredited training provider through which we provide the PMO practitioner, the assurance practitioner, and the legal uh, project management courses as well as the APM Project Fundamentals qualification as well. And we've got quite an eclectic mix of clients that span sectors, industries, and even continents. And there's a growing list of case studies available on our website with the China Court Financial Services case study making an appearance shortly. The link for that particular page is displayed on the screen. So that does bring me on to the primary focus for today, the Chartered Court Financial Services customer story through which you'll discover how they've managed to transform their ways of working with the aid of Microsoft Project Online. So Simon and uh, Sarah, could you please give us a bit of background on yourselves and the PMO team within Charter Corp? Sure, Bud. Good afternoon. So um, I've been a change professional now for about 20 years. Um, I've done every role, I think, within the change lifecycle and um, function. So I've um, been a BA, been a project manager, program manager, and I've run now large transformation and change functions um, for the last 10 years or so, working in financial services for a large pensions provider, um, for government, um, for Capgemini and a number of accounts, um, and joined Charter Court last April. Hi, so I'm Sarah Ward. I am the PMO Manager at Charter Court. Um, prior to working here, I started my career in financial services back in 2003 as an administration assistant. Uh, I then moved over to a project team to set up a new project team in about 2009. So I've got 
just around 10 years PMO experience. Um, I've worked at Charter Court for four years and in our PMO function there is three of us, as you can see there. You've got myself, Sarah Hayes and Helen Tellin and between us we do have a vast amount of PMO experience. Thank you very much guys. And, and Sarah, what does the P in PMO stand for at Charter Court? So it actually stands for projects. We do have um, quite an input also into programmes and into the portfolio through an annual planning cycle. Thank you very much, Sarah. And could you tell us a bit about the organisation? Sure. So um, Charter Court's a fairly young company, um, under 10 years old, um, and it's a specialist mortgage bank. We're now about 650 people. Um, I think about four or five years ago, it was just under the 100 mark, so it's fairly rapid growth we've experienced in the last few years. Um, we're located in the West Midlands in Wolverhampton, and we have an office in London. We have three key brands, which you can hopefully see on the screen. We have our Charter Savings Bank. Um, we have Precise Mortgages, which is our lending arm of the business, and then we have Exact Mortgage, mortgage Experts, which is our servicing centre and servicing of all of our mortgage loans. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. So prior to implementing Project Online, could you tell us a bit about the tools you were using, the types of projects you're managing currently, and ultimately what the catalyst for change was? Yeah, sure. So um, when I arrived last year, we, we clearly sat, sat down with the, the change team and we had a look at how we worked. Um, and a number, of, a number of things came to light as we did that kind of initial assessment and maturity assessment that our existing planning tools weren't really fit for purpose. Um, a lot of our reporting was very manual and time consuming and I watched PMO um, slaving away on Friday afternoons to collate everything, which used to take hours on end. Um, because we had various planning tools, a little bit of Excel, a little bit of Smartsheet, a little bit of other things, we, we weren't very consistent to our, to our stakeholders in the way that we reported. So it was really important to look at that and how we could address that. We didn't have a consistent and easy way to show MI, so within the different work streams and projects, I had a team that was really good at delivering, but we were inconsistent in the way that we reported the MI, that the, the teams reported different things on different project streams, and so we wanted to bring some more consistency and, I guess, professionalism to that side of things. That was against the background of a rapidly growing portfolio. You know, The, the number of projects went from 30 to 40 to 60 to 80 inside um, the best part of 18 months. Um, so it was a huge growth of the amount of change that Charter Court were looking to do, so we had to align and adapt to future fit um, to make sure that we could do that. And I really wanted PMO to get back to what you know they're really good at, which is helping us deliver. So it became very much a project support function at Charter Court, lots of meeting organisation, lots of um, filling in plans for project managers, and actually what we wanted was that kind of you know real value that PMO can add about early warning signs, good MI, good insight into what we were doing. Um, and that was a key driver to give them that, that kind of value back. And also, you know, to demonstrate a commitment to the project managers who were working really hard to give them a first class and world class tool to do their job. So we gave them the right support and the right tools and the right, you know, um, infrastructure and framework to perform at their best. Could you guys give us some sort of insight into how long it was taking to produce report? So, uh, reporting-wise, so we have a deadline for project managers to produce their reports on a Friday. So, when this was quite a manual process, it was taking um, the project managers a long time to do, and also PMO, PMO were then spending the whole of you know their Friday looking through reports and trying to marry them back up with plans. Um, resource reporting, so that was very manual. That would probably take me at least a day a week to try and uh, look at the information that we had and then when you're going through the annual planning cycle that was taking it was taking days if not weeks to try and get some useful MI out of that so it's all, yeah. all very useful. And I've got to say that it's, it's very common uh, prior to deploying a PPM tool it is very time consuming and Friday reporting is very common um, so there are of course a number of PPM solutions available so what was it that stood out about Microsoft Project Online? So for me, I'd, I'd used Microsoft Project before, although not Project Online, I have to say, for the, some of the things that, that that's brought have been an eye-opener to me as well. But 
Um, clearly, it's a market leader, and so it was the first tool we, we kind of looked at. We researched the benefits it could offer, and it, it fitted our proposition well, which was to start simply with something that's familiar. So the Microsoft products are fairly familiar to everybody. That was important. Um, whereas I think a lot of the freeware that you can get now, some of that can be, it takes a while to get used to it and how you use it. Um, so we wanted to be able to get up and running quickly. So we wanted something that, that had familiarity that we could use that integrated already onto our estate. When we looked at the usability, the out-of-the-box reports um, looked really good. So we didn't have too much work to do to get up and running and to be, you know, become fairly useful with it quite quickly. Um, Power BI was an incredibly compelling case for it because um, the amount of configuration we can do allows us to look across the portfolio through the projects at different views, cut it by team, cut it by work stream, and, and particularly as we have a you know subsets of stakeholders that often want bespoke or, or, or you know distinctive MI for their functions. It was really important we could do that. Um, so when, when we did that assessment, it was the best on the market as far as we were concerned. Um, and it also, because we're investing in a tool that's well known and that's you know, best of best of breed, it again demonstrated the commitment to the team that we were going to invest in them to help get the function to a place that we wanted it to go. Mm. And Project Online sits within Office 365. So did you already have Office 365 in place before deploying Project Online? No, it's, it's kind of the catalyst for our journey on 365. So we, we are, it's on our roadmap to do. Um, and clearly, it will enhance the capability of, of projects online because we can then start to publish to SharePoint and all of our reports can be shared in a, in a very good way. We've got a lot more functionality that will come with 365. But it was a, it was a good trigger for Charter Court to kind of start that 365 journey. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, this obviously results in a lot of change, and there's a great quote from Woodrow Wilson, who happened to be the 28th U.S. president, which is, if you want to make enemies, try to change something. So, Simon, when you decided to implement Project Online, you were quite new to Charter Court. So, how did you manage the change and, and manage to win hearts and minds? So, we um, first of all, we did some demonstrations of the capability and the... And the the level of benefits it would give. So we ran a number of stakeholders through that and the teams through that. We wanted buy-in by not only the senior people in the organization, but also the people that were going to use it. So we um, we canvassed opinion and everybody was on board with looking at projects. We then, it was really, really important to me that we got up and running quickly. So we weren't, um, we didn't have a long thinking time before we actually had the tool in use and in practice. So we set up a very small project with challenging milestones. I think I gave everybody two months to go from old solution to new solution, which is incredibly tight, but it was important after we told the dream of kind of moving to the tool that we, we could show benefit from it really quickly to get everybody on board. Um, so we selected a small team based around PMA, some of the project managers to get them involved and so they had a say in the way we shaped it. And we kept our requirements really simple. So we wanted a basic solution up and running with clean data at the start, which was really important so that we didn't um, devalue the tool by loading it with out-of-date data or poor quality data. Um, so we did that very quickly. And then we recognized that we needed to invest in training to be you know, as useful as we could be in it. And that's when we, we partnered with Wellington. So all the way through that, we kept the team informed of progress. We did regular demos after each session with Marissa from Wellington. We, we then came back and showed all the new funky stuff that we could now do, showed a lot of the reports, um, demonstrated how Power BI interacted with what we did in the tool, demonstrated how easy it was to update, and that kept everybody really enthused by the journey. And actually, everybody had real fun doing it. You know, everybody, it was a good thing to do because you could see results quickly, because you could see the transformation it was making and the level of reporting we could get and the speed and ease at which you could do it. And, and really, just by maintaining your project plan as a project manager, it gives us so much insight now into the into the portfolio. So that's that's why we did it. Once we got it to a point, we then shared that journey with um, executive stakeholders, and it's been received really, really well. Very good. And uh, you mentioned that you've entered clean data into the environment. So, what did data migration look like? Did you phase it? Did you start with a particular team then? bring project managers on gradually. What was that process like? Um, well, guys, we started by looking at um, the projects that were already active that we that we have planned for already. 
and uh, PMO worked quite closely with the project managers just to try and get the information that was in those existing plans uh, as accurate as we possibly could, particularly around um, resources required to work on the project. So um, yeah, we just we started with those and then we loaded those into the into the project online and then now we've got we've got our new project for 2019 which have which have also gone in. And did you get much objection to the tool coming in? Um, we have absolutely anything you get early adopters who you use then to to show how um, this can transform what we do and then we had some people who were more cautious but you know for, for, for the right reasons they wanted to understand how they had to use it wanted to understand what it was going to give I think the feedback they've now had from the way that we now run boards the standardization of our reporting the consistency and everything we do has really got those people who may be slightly more reluctant at the start has really brought them on board with it now and even our um, even our, our, our most reluctant kind of project managers at the start who didn't understand the reason for, for all of the scrutiny have now become kind of advocates for doing it and are, are normally the first to update and the first to use the tool each week. In brief, what would you say have been some of the benefits that you've experienced so far in addition to what we've already covered? So I think I think for me, um, from my position, I wanted to view the portfolio. I've now got one version of the truth, which I can go to at any time of day or night to have a look at. Um, I can click through to find out what I want. The information is really easy to use. It's really easy to see. Um, and I know because of the way the project managers now work, the interaction with resource managers, the interaction with the project teams, the interaction on the updated milestones, on resourcing with PMO, I know that what I'm seeing is an agreed view of the world. And um, our reporting is now shared widely, so everybody is on board with the rank status, everybody's on board with the status updates. So we know that we have a, an agreed and consistent change function that I can then see that, that single version of, of where we are. We've got access to an amazing suite of MI now, and the more we learn, the more we want to know. So um, we've already written um, a number of our own reports now that give us really early visibility and warning signs of um, milestones drifting off. So one of our big issues at the start was the visibility of, of our reporting. We, I, had a, I inherited a portfolio that often went green, 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 red, and I wondered what had happened in the middle. Um, so now we get that really early sight of, um, any milestones that are drifting, any of our reportable stuff that starts to move away from its date or its completion is not there. We have that visibility and we're able to talk to people about a path back to green for all of those. So we're starting to manage our risk a lot earlier. We've moved all of that milestone and, and crisis planning to the left in the project stream, so we're not leaving it to the end. Um, and because everything's real time and up to date, you get a real good view of where we are right now because some of our projects are, are small, some of them are two to three year large regulatory projects, but the smaller things, a week can be quite a long time and things can drift you know, reasonably quickly, so having real time MI is fantastic. Um, it's allowed PMO to really focus on adding value and being part of our delivery team, so instead of being a support function, they're now providing all of our delivery leads, all of our project managers with the information they need in order to um, give them that oversight of their projects, any resource challenges really early sight of our pipeline so we can look out now for two years um, and see if we've got any resource demand that, that we need to address. So we've used the MI from the tool really successfully to recruit into teams where we've had um, a lack of supply and the exec now they've got confidence in the MI are really happy to support those requests and cases. Um, our resource managers are enthused by having a clear view of everything that's been requested so Again, in the early days, one of the challenges was I don't know what's coming and I can't see it. Well, now they can, and that's been a, a big win for us at getting everybody on side. And they can, you know, quite rightly come and ask questions and challenges if we've overcommitted them or have got or are pulling on resources in, in different directions. Um, and I think the best the best bit of it is that everybody in the organisation now loves what it's done. It's given us visibility. It's great fun to work with. We've had a, a blast doing the project. It was really to go on that journey and see come out the other side now with our suite of MI and the way that it all looks is fantastic and our exec are incredibly complimentary of it. We use it in change committee which is my monthly meeting into the exec, we use it in all of our boards. The level of consistency, the confidence they've now got in our control and the information we're giving has gone through the roof and it's been, you know, I'm really proud of everybody that's done it and I think the, the team are really proud of what they've achieved. That's a very good job and, and you mentioned earlier that 
the PMO was essentially perceived as a support function. So has the tool in part enabled the PMO to become higher profile? And, and what does the perception of a PMO look like now? It has bad. So as Simon said, we were, you know, we were quite a support function previously. So we're now the go-to people for MRI. So we've got so much information at our fingertips now, which we just couldn't, you know, get hold of easily beforehand. Um, so we've had a lot of training with using Microsoft Project. So um, we're now able to relay that back to the uh, project management team and any new members coming on board. So we've got um, quite a heavy involvement with governance, visibility at project board, and just you know the ability to be able to really easily produce board packs for the project management team to use. So that is really good. So as well as MI and governance, are there any plans for the PMO to take on maybe more of a strategic responsibility to ensure the projects are strategically aligned and that they're prioritised effectively? Is that something that's on the cards maybe as well? Yeah, we, we are. Both. We've got, we, we ran a, an annual planning cycle last time, which is the first time the Charter Court had ever gone through that process in terms of looking at, you know, maybe one and two years out, start to think about what we want to do. PMA will run that process themselves this time. Um, and they will go out and meet all the stakeholders, will gather all of the priorities and then present that information back to the exec to allow them to make those strategic choices about what 2020 looks like and what 2021 looks like. Um, and then we continually manage and evolve that portfolio. As you can imagine, it's forever. Um, things are coming in and things are dropping out all of the time as, as regulations change and the, the strategic direction changes. Absolutely. So you've got to the end of phase one, and that's been an overwhelming success. What else do you have on the roadmap? So I think for me now, we've, we've been using it for coming up to three months now in anger, and we've learned an awful lot. So we're constantly changing the MI and tweaking our reports and some of the stats we get from it to give us the right level of insight, which is a, you know, we can also do really easily because it's easily configurable. Um, we really want to keep building a trusted view of our demand and supply, so our resourcing, so where the business is asking us to do a lot, we can we can give really good information now about where we need to perhaps bring in some external help to do various pieces of work, perhaps kind of look at where we've got capacity in teams so we can bring things forward or move things around and, and continue to work with that and enhance that capability and we'll provide that. We want to widen the usage of our online reporting and empower people to challenge our portfolio function with good MI. So we want to be a really transparent change function. So by putting the MI out there for everybody to see, we open ourselves up to question and challenge, which is good. Um, and we want to really encourage that from everybody. So the move to 365 and, and then making those um, all of our reporting transparent to the entire business is, is coming next. Um, we have a change scorecard which kind of assesses how good the organization is at delivering change and we want to see that the tool is supporting that in, in, into an improvement this year. So from our measures in January by the end of the year we want to clearly show that we've got better at delivering, got better at tracking, got better at risk management. And I think you know, we're learning more every day about it. There's so much functionality in there that we can use if we wanted to. And I think part of the journey and part of the fun we've had with it is, is kind of exploring that and um, also learning from each other, you know, all the project managers, the project leads, the program managers, they've all got different views on, you know, what's useful and what's not. And so we're continually listening and collating that to kind of develop the capability. Yeah, absolutely. And we always advocate a phased implementation of Project Online because there is a lot of capability. There's a lot of maturing as well that many organizations have to go through. And at the beginning, you don't know what you don't know and you should grow gradually. So taking the uh, right path there. Uh, having been through the journey now, um, and for the benefit of any organizations that are maybe planning on deploying a PPM solution, what lessons have you learned and what advice would you give? So I think get some help. You know, it's it's not a tool that you're going to learn overnight with a book. It, you know, you need some expertise to help and guide you, and that was incredibly valuable. And the time we spent um, with Marissa was in those training courses with really got us moving a lot quicker than we ever would if we'd have self-started. Um, give yourself time before you start, I would say, to get your data right before you migrate. I think if you put poor data into the tool, it will immediately undermine the fact that the tool is there. So um, if you start to get poor data out of the tool in the reports, people will lose faith in it very quickly. So we made sure that we, we were very clean when we entered the, the data across so that we had something that was useful straight away. 
you need to put a lot of time in with the project manager to start with and getting their plans across and understanding those that have maybe not done resourcing in a tool before about how to how to level and profile and all of the good stuff that you need to do in order to get realistic MI out of it. So allow the time for PMO to go and do that. Don't don't ask them to be doing too much else in that period and um, make sure that's that's well supported. Um, keep the requirements simple would be my advice at the start. I think that enabled us to get up and running really quickly, which was a key driver. And, and that was the right thing to do because I think if we'd have if we'd have set out all of our MI and reporting and the way we were going to use the tool at the start, it would be it would look very different now. So actually, by not doing that and just having a very simple framework, we're now able to adapt and enhance as we go, rather than spending six months trying to work out what we wanted and then perhaps even then getting it wrong. Um, and think about the processes. You know, where does it impact? Who would benefit from having the tool? It's not about project managers and PMO only. It's about resource managers and insight for execs and insight for board members and stakeholders and requirements people and testers so that everybody knows what's going on, everyone can see what's going on, everyone can see the challenges, and everyone can ask questions. And that's been a real learn for us, that people are now coming to us asking for more and more licenses because they want to be part of it and they want to see what's going on. Um, and that's been a, you know, a huge win for us, um, particularly on the resource management side and that visibility and oversight it's given. Um, and be enthusiastic about it. You know, it's a great thing to do when you go from, you know, having a few Excel sheets dotted about the place. The capability we've now got inside the three months, it's it's been a really exciting thing to do, and I think hopefully everybody's enjoyed it. That's worked on it. Simon, Sarah, thank you ever so much for sharing your story. I've only got a few more slides to go, and I will be sharing our contact details again at the end. In terms of case study, as I mentioned earlier, we have a case study on this journey being published very soon. And it's going to be available on both the Microsoft and the Wellington websites at the addresses that are currently displayed on the screen. I did talk about this earlier. So if you are in the financial services sector and you want to learn how you can increase the PPM maturity of your organization through Microsoft Project Online, then please do take a look at our forthcoming event at the Microsoft offices in London and register your interest. Details can be displayed on the screen, but Again, that's on the 1st of May, and it's a essentially a half-day event, and we also provide a free lunch. So what else could you ask for? Contact details. So in closing, if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to get in touch using the details currently displayed. You can also follow Wellington on LinkedIn and find out more about Charter Court at chartercourtfs.co.uk. From all of us, thank you for attending. We hope you found the session enlightening. Again, if you've asked any questions, we will respond back to those. But if you would like to fire off any questions directly to myself, Simon, or to Sarah, please do so using the email addresses currently displayed. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Baz, Simon, and Sarah for a fantastic webinar. Thank you to those of you who have joined us. If you have submitted a question, and we have got a couple, then thank you very much for contributing. Um, all the questions will be answered and made available to you. Um, you'll receive an email in the next few days with links to the webinar on the APM YouTube account and APM SlideShare accounts. We hope that you've enjoyed the session today. Have a great rest of the afternoon.